Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. I post true crime content like this every single week. So if that's something you're interested in, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and let's get on to today's case. I want to give a disclaimer quickly. A, I'm wearing a cap because my hair's a mess, and B, a content warning. This case is the murder of a 15 year old child so if that's something you can't watch click out now and I'll see you in next week's video so let's get on to the case Rebecca Aylward was born on the 28th of February 1995 in Bridgend which is in the south of Wales Rebecca had two younger siblings named Jessica and Jack and her and her siblings were very close. Rebecca was a very kind and protective person. If she saw someone being bullied, she was the type to go and say something and help to protect the other student. At age 13, Rebecca Aylward became friends with a boy named Joshua Davies. And not long after they met, they became boyfriend and girlfriend. Both Joshua and Rebecca were very clever. They were always well behaved at school and they both seemed perfect for each other. Joshua Davies was Rebecca's first serious relationship. He would spend lots of time at her house and her entire family got on with her and loved Joshua Davies. Joshua was quite an artist as well. He would draw pictures of monsters going into battle with guns, knives and blood. Rebecca really loved these drawings and would often show them off to people, like her parents. Joshua Davies also liked to collect some interesting items. He would collect hunting knives and old antique guns. Rebecca and her siblings and her friends would often spend lots of time at Joshua's house. They would just hang out, listen to music, watch TV, you know, enjoy the vibes. However, one time when Jessica and Rebecca went over, Joshua pretended to threaten Jessica with one of the knives. After three months of Joshua and Rebecca dating, they had a sleepover at Rebecca's house. When he was leaving to go home, he told Rebecca's parents that it was the best weekend of his life. They were taking photos, playing games, Rebecca painted Josh's nails. They overall just had an amazing weekend. But a few hours later, Joshua Davies broke up with Rebecca. Rebecca's mum, Sonia, says that she was mortified. She just didn't understand why. They had just had the best weekend together, and now he was breaking up with her for seemingly no reason. Rebecca was very confused regarding the breakup. After the breakup, Joshua Davies' whole demeanour towards Rebecca completely changed. He borderline bullied her and he was spreading rumours about her, telling people that she was pregnant. Joshua and Rebecca shared a lot of the same friends and Joshua Davies tried to turn all her friends against her. He wanted them to hate the her as much as he hated her, but this obviously didn't work. One of Josh's friends told him to ignore her and just pretend that she wasn't there and that they were leaving school so he wouldn't have to see her again which Joshua replied with just being aware of her existence, knowing she was in the world, made him angry. The bullying from Joshua Davies had been happening for months now and Rebecca had confided into her f friends that she believed that Joshua Davies wanted to kill her. Well, Rebecca's feeling was spot on. Joshua was telling all of his friends all the different ways that he could kill Rebecca. Obviously his friends didn't believe that Joshua actually wanted to kill Rebecca. They just thought he was angry and just saying all these wild things in the heat of the moment. He was saying that he would take her to a local bridge and push her off or even convince her to jump off herself. His friends knew that he was into a lot of dark things such as drawing monsters covered in blood, collecting guns and knives, but they knew as a, that Joshua Davies as a person was not violent. 
A few months went by and the bullying seemed to stop, but secretly Josh still had a deep hatred for Rebecca. They would spend a lot of time together as they shared the same group of friends, so he decided to stop the bullying even though deep down he still hated her. In summer 2010, Rebecca became very ill. She was blacking out, she was vomiting, so she was in the hospital for a good amount of time. Doctors did many tests but could not determine her sickness. All of her friends were coming to see Rebecca in the hospital, sending a text, checking if she was okay, but Joshua Davies didn't send her a single text. Due to Rebecca and Joshua sharing the same friends, they were talking about her being in hospital, but it seemed that Josh just didn't care and I was just and was just getting on with his life, pretending she didn't exist. Every Saturday morning, Joshua and his friends would go to a local cafe and eat breakfast together. And as usual, Joshua began to discuss how he would kill Rebecca. Now his friends still didn't believe that he was going to kill Rebecca, so one of his friends offered a bet that if Josh did kill Rebecca, he would buy his breakfast for him the following Saturday. This bet became a bit of a running joke in the friendship group and they would bring it up often saying that if Josh did kill Rebecca that he was going to get a breakfast out of it. Rebecca had now been discharged from the hospital and had overcome her unknown illness. She came back to school, she got a new boyfriend, she just started to move on and have a fresh start. But this made Josh jealous. He started to like her again. He became friends with her again and then was clearly jealous of Rebecca's new boyfriend. And Rebecca felt the same way. She had not lost her feelings for Josh. She said that she would always have feelings for him and that she would drop anything just to be with Josh if he changed his mind. On Friday the 22nd of October, Josh texted Rebecca asking if they could meet up and implied that they may restart their relationship. Rebecca was excited, she even ran downstairs and showed her mum the text messages. That is when they noticed that Joshua Davies had changed his Facebook profile photo. Joshua would often change his profile picture and that would signify a big thing that was going to happen. For example, asking Rebecca to be his girlfriend again. But this photo was the picture of a local woods, which Rebecca and her mum were confused about. Usually the photo was a reflection of the big event that was going to happen. Now this made Rebecca even more excited because she knew that something big was going to happen. She had received the text implying that her and Josh were getting back together, so she was pretty excited to see Josh. On Saturday, October the 23rd, Rebecca got up. She was all excited for the day. She was singing and dancing around her room as she was getting ready to meet Josh. She had bought a new outfit especially for it and she was just in a really good mood. Joshua Davies was with his friends in the cafe eating his breakfast but then he left early to meet Rebecca. As he was leaving and packing his things, he said to his friends, the time has come. Joshua and Rebecca were going to be meeting at the train station. So that is where Rebecca's mum, Sonia, dropped her off. She waited there for 10 minutes, but Josh Davies never came. She, she then received a text from Joshua saying that the plans had changed and that they should meet at the local park. She arrived at the park and Josh still wasn't there. She waited for another 10 minutes and began to think that she had been stood up and that Josh was not going to show up. Sonia was not happy that Josh was making Rebecca walk all over the place to meet him, so she made Rebecca stay on the phone while she walked from the park to the village, just in case he was messing her about and just sending her to all these different places. She arrived at the street in the village where she and Josh were supposed to meet and she realised that once again Josh wasn't there. She waited around for a short while. She began to get upset when she started to see a boy walking down the hill. Her mother was still on the phone at this point and was repeatedly asking if it was Josh. 
Rebecca was saying, I think so, but when he got up closer to her, she knew it was definitely Joshua Davies. When Rebecca and Sonia were on the phone around Josh, he would usually pop in and say something to her. He would just be like, hi Sonia, how are you? But this time, Josh said absolutely nothing, which she found very strange. Rebecca then ended the phone saying, I love you, to her mom, and then she and Josh went off somewhere. At 5pm, four hours after Josh and Rebecca's meeting, Sonia received a text off Rebecca's auntie saying she had tried to contact Rebecca but her phone was off and was asking if Sonia could pass a message on. Rebecca never let her phone run out of battery or she would never turn it off and Sonia began to become worried realising that Rebecca should have been home hours ago but still wasn't. The plan was for Josh and Rebecca to meet in the village and then they were going to walk to Rebecca's house. But it had been four hours. So Sonia started ringing all Rebecca's friends asking if they had seen her, but none of them had seen. That was when Sonia and Rebecca's auntie got in the car and drove around looking for her. They then went to the train station, the park and the village just searching all the places that she would have been. Her younger sister Jessica and her best friend were calling Rebecca and Joshua's phone over and over again. Sometimes it would go straight to voicemail or the phone would ring and then the call would be declined. So that showed that the phones were still on but they were just being ignored. So at 8 or 9 p.m. so about 7 or 8 hours after Rebecca was last seen it began to drop dark. So Sonia called the police and officially reported Rebecca Aylward as a missing person. An hour after Rebecca had been reported missing, Sonia was able to get in contact with Joshua Davies, who had told her he had never met Rebecca that day. He said that he was at his grandmother's house all day, even though a couple hours prior he had posted on Facebook saying he was with friends. Joshua said he had called Rebecca when she was in the village telling her he was unable to make it because he was at his grandmother's house all day. Sonia asked Josh, that wasn't you with Rebecca when I was on the phone with her and he just replied with no. Joshua Davies seemed pretty worried though so Sonia and him agreed that they would inform each other of any developments if they came up. Josh and all of Rebecca's friends posted on social media that night, spreading awareness of Rebecca's disappearance. And Josh even commented saying that he felt sorry for Sonia. The searches lasted long into the night, and the next morning her disappearance was all over the local news. One of Josh's friends had seen Rebecca's disappearance on the news, and he instantly suspected that Joshua Davies had something to do with her disappearance. This boy spoke to his parents and told them that he thought Rebecca had most definitely been harmed. He told his parents to call the police and tell them about the local woods as seen in Josh's Facebook profile photo. The police then went and searched these woods and there they found the body of 15 year old Rebecca Aylward. They found her face down on the ground. She had been bludgeoned with a rock on the back of the head several times. She had actually been hit so hard that her skull had caved in. Her cause of death was injury to the brain. The police then arrested Joshua Davies and his friend. And poor Sonia came to Josh's defence, telling the police that he would never do anything like that and especially not to Rebecca and that he was, she thought he was innocent. But the police told her that they believed he was the one to physically carry out this brutal attack on her daughter. The police questioned all of Rebecca's friends and asked them who they thought would have killed her and they all said Joshua Davies. So Josh was charged with murder and his trial began in July in 2011.
During his trial, the police found that this wasn't Josh's first attempt at killing 15-year-old Rebecca Aylward. Police found homemade poison when searches were carried out on his home. This poison was made from foxglove, deadly nightshade and coca-cola. Now this can't be proven that it was for Rebecca, but based on the fact that he actually did end up murdering Rebecca and other evidence, it is strongly believed that this was intended for Rebecca. When Joshua Davies talked about all the ways he could kill Rebecca to his friends, poisoning was a method which was brought up over and over again. Josh had texted that one friend from earlier saying, don't say anything but you might just owe me a breakfast. An hour after Rebecca's phone call with her mother, Sonia, phone records show Josh received a text from his friend asking if he was with Rebecca and Josh replied with define with, basically meaning that he was with her but now she was dead. In his trial, Josh claims that he was there while the murder was happening but it was his best friend who killed Rebecca and that he just stood and watched. Josh, say, Josh says that he and Rebecca played a joke on Josh's friend and he got so angry that he started bludgeoning Rebecca to death with a rock. The judge in court asked him to reenact how his friend had killed Rebecca but from the way that he was doing it, it was obvious that he was acting from memory the way he had killed Rebecca. Another of Joshua Davies' friends had testified, saying he definitely knew that Josh was the killer because he'd actually taken him to see Rebecca's dead body. Joshua had actually tried to kill Rebecca by snapping her neck, but, the, but he was unable to do this and he said, quote, it's harder than you think. Now, after this attempt of killing her, Rebecca realised Josh's intentions. Now, after this attempt of killing her, Rebecca realised Josh's intentions. She was trying to protect herself and trying to run away. Josh then thought that he had to kill her now because she did, if she escaped, he would get in trouble for trying to kill her, so he tried, killed her to silence her. Joshua Davy saw a large rock on the floor. He picked it up and started bashing her over the head. On July 27th, 2011, Joshua Davies was found guilty of the murder of Rebecca Aylward and he was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 14 years. So that's the end of this case. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, stream my podcast, I'll put it on screen and link it down below. I've not posted on there in ages, but you'll get some content eventually. Um, yeah. Comment down below any cases or anything about this case and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.